Oh, this is question number three. Question number three, in a way, it looks as if it's long. But then if you look and read in between the lines, you will observe that it's actually very interesting. See, now what the question says is you have a differential equation that models the behavior of a falling mass. So taking into consideration air resistance, the relationship between the air resistance and the square of the instantaneous velocity. So all in all, what we have is this to be a differential, the differential equation here. All this they are saying might not really matter. So where k is where k greater than zero is the constant of proportionality. Now we are told to solve the equation subject to this initial condition. That's the first thing. And the next thing is we use our solution that we obtain in part A to determine the limiting, the limiting velocity. So the limiting velocity here, you are told to find the limit as t tends to infinity of whatever velocity we get. That's what we are told to find here. And then for the last one here, which is it says if the if the distance is s measured from the point blah blah, then and is related by this, we know that there, there, there might be a typo here. We know that the s the t, the s the t equals v of t. So we know that. So we are told to find an explicit expression for s of t given this initial condition. So we are going to see now to start solving this. I'm going to write this down. So what we have is we have m dv dt equals mg minus kv squared. Now I want to solve this differential equation. Now to even think of solving this differential equation, there are some things we need to note. So we need to know that if you integrate the x all over a squared minus x squared, that's going to give you 1 all over a. Now this is the hyperbolic tangent sign of x all over a plus c. Now these are, these, these are the tools that we'll use in trying to solve this um, differential equation. It's actually simpler than to use, it's simpler and easier this way than using the, um, the other method which we're going to use the lane, and which is quite longer and you're most likely to make mistakes. That's why I decided to write down this method because it's more beneficial. Now our aim is to solve for v. So the first thing is you observe, is there any way we could, what technique am I going to use in trying to solve this differential equation? So the first thing I'm going to try and see is, can I use the separable method? Now let's see. Let me put all the m's on one side. So I'm going to have dv, I'm dividing both sides now by, by m. So you have g minus k all over m v squared. So this is what I have. g is a constant, k over m is a constant. So all we have is just v squared. So I can just use the separate method, which is very fine. So using that you have dv divided by g minus k all over m v squared equals equals dt. Now I'm going to make a little representation here. I'm going to say let let a let a squared equals k all over m. So a squared is representing my k over m now. So instead of writing k over m, I'm going to be writing k squared a squared. So what we have is going to be dv. So we have dv divided by g minus a squared v squared equals equals dt. So when we bring down to this side, so we have dv all over root g root g squared minus a v squared equals equals dt. So let's continue. Let's solve this. So we want to integrate both sides. So we we'll recall that we said the x all over a squared minus x squared equals one over a arc tangent now of x over a. So here is going to be 1 all over, so this is my a here, 1 all over root g, then the arc tangent of, this is representing my x, that is a v all over, this is my a now, all over root g, 
now equals equals t but then we observe that there is an a here it's not just only v that is here so we still need to divide divide this by divide this by the differentiation of what we have here which is a and then when we simplify that further what we would have is 1 all over a root g what's wrong with this a root g Arctangent of a v all over g equals equals t but then don't forget we want to solve for v so to solve for v we need to remove every barrier around every barrier around them um, around v so the first barrier i want to remove is i want to remove this man here so to remove this man i cross multiply both sides by a root g so what we have is going to be arc tangent of a v over g equals a root g times times t so plus we should always forget this arbitrary constant anyway plus c and which the c is going to be multiplied by a root a root g and we're going to get a new constant there <clears throat> so what that's going to give us is going to be a root g a root g times c plus this and this and this they are all constants so it's a new constant so we're going to call that c1 so that is arc tangent of a v all over g gives us this so to find a v over g so this implies that a v over g equals so this is the inverse so that implies equals tan of a root g t plus c1 and then v equals g all over a a tan of a tangent of a root g t plus c plus c1 now don't forget you know we had a particular we represented we said our a here we said a squared equals root k over m so this implies that a equals square root of k all over m so i'm going to put that back here so when we put that back, substitute a equals root k over m here, we're going to have our v <coughs> to be the root of mg over k tan into root of kg over m times t, the same t, plus c1, plus c1. So this is the general solution. That's the general solution. But then we're told to use an initial condition. The initial condition it says when t equals zero, v is v naught. So that we can find a particular solution. So that's what we're going to use now. So now when t equals zero, so using t equals zero, we're told that v equals v naught. So this becomes v naught. So we're gonna have v naught equals then root of mg over k. So t equals zero, and this goes to zero. This actually goes to zero, and then becomes fan of of c one. So to find c one now, c one is just gonna be the arc tangent. Of v naught root k over mg root k over mg. I only made c1 the subject of this equation here. So now we've been able to find c1. So now we don't have any arbitrary constants now. So therefore, our final solution that is the particular solution will just be v equals the root of mg over k than of root of kg over mt plus plus c1 so where our c1 now is is this so i said not to write this since we already know that this this is a what c1 is representing and then this is going to be the particular solution for question question one